Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the slide switch. We'll be looking at how to connect them and interface them with the Raspberry Pi Pico and how to handle them with MicroPython code. We'll take a look at a few examples of them and their applications. We'll review a data sheet so that you can understand a little bit more about their important attributes. And we'll take a look at a wiring diagram using fritzing. And finally, we'll go over how to handle them with MicroPython code in the Raspberry Pi Pico. Slide switches have really lost favor in uh, recent years. Uh, probably, I think, the, the creation of the toggle switch, moving into the rocker switch, each new type of switch kind of pushed the slide switch further and further into the background. I couldn't really find uh, historical information back to uh, when it was invented and they were first uh, being utilized, etc. But I suspect the slide switch probably goes back to the turn of the last century, early 1900s, somewhere in there. Um, I did find reference to uh, the dip switch variety of the slide switch dating to 1970. So let's take a quick look at the switches and then we'll talk a little bit more about their applications. This is a typical slide switch that you would see. Uh, often they are used for powering a device on or off. Again, more of a power switch than it is for a logic switch. Um, in this particular case, it's got solder lugs. It's very small in size, small lugs, thin sheet metal, so we know that this is probably rated for very, very low voltage and current. Their action is common to all of them. The switch is in one position for off, slide it over, and then the position uh, would be on. So slide off, slide on, and that is how they operate. And you can get uh, uh, two-way switches as well. We're in the middle position, it's off. All the way to the right would be on for one circuit. All the way to the left would be on for another circuit. They come in different sizes. This one's obviously much bigger uh, than this one. And uh, I've seen them much, much bigger than this as well uh, for various applications. Uh, but again, Popularity is getting less and less. I think one place you'll commonly still see them uh, is on computer power supplies where you would switch between uh, 120 volts and 240 volts. Just the switch that they chose for, for switching that. Here is a dip switch package that is made up of uh, little slide switches. This one's just a six pos or five position, I'm sorry. Uh, it's a dual inline package, thus a dip switch, and this allows you to set the state of certain electronic portions of your circuit board to be active or not active. And you can also configure software in uh, MicroPython using these types of switches, as well as the larger ones. And that's the application we'll look at today uh, with MicroPython. Let's jump right into the data sheet for slide switches. The first thing you'll notice right away is a vast variety of switches that this particular company offers. To me, that's rather surprising because I just don't see that many slide switches used out in the real world. Obviously, I'm wrong. Uh, but we do want to check our, our electrical ratings uh, for this particular example uh, data sheet, uh, selecting this one, 4.4 VA at 20 volts, uh, well within what we're doing at 3.3 volts and only a couple milliamps. Uh, but they're saying it's got a life cycle of 60,000 actuations. Again, that would probably be rated at maximum uh, ratings over here. And you can see a wide variety of different ones that they're offering, uh, having various uh, ratings. Uh, here's one that's uh, only 200 milliamps at 30 volts VC, voltage DC. So that one's kind of getting closer to what we're doing, but we're, we would still be well safe in that range. Uh, they always, data sheets will often show packaging and that sort of stuff. Uh, and then it goes on just with example after example and uh, current ratings and uh, that was for uh, surface mounting, reflow values for the oven when it melts the solder. 
So there's just a lot of information in here showing the mounting, uh, sizes, etc. Always check data sheets whenever possible. Now let's see how to wire this up. Really quite straightforward. Here's our Raspberry Pi Pico. This particular wire here, or pin, is 3.3 volts. We'll carry that around to the breadboard's positive rail up here. We will connect, in my case, a yellow wire to go up to the common on the slide switch. And then on the output side of that switch, when it's turned on, it's going to come through the blue wire into GP number 15. You may also notice I've got a ground wire here going to a ground rail on the breadboard. That's just common practice for me, so that I've always got a ground handy should I need one. Obviously not needed in this circuit. Now let's take a look at it on the actual breadboard. Here you can see that ground wire I just mentioned. Here's our 3.3 volts coming over to the positive rail. We connect that up to a yellow wire going into the common on the slide switch. And then in the on position, the current would flow through the blue wire into GP number 15. Let's take a look at how this will all work in code. First thing we need to do is import the machine library, which gives us access to the hardware of the Pico. And then we're going to import the uTime or MicroTime library, which is the Python time library for microcontrollers and MicroPython. And here is how we're going to use it. We're just going to use it as a short sleep or a dwell time in the middle of our main loop just to slow it down. Going back to the top where we're creating an object called an LED. And that is for this small LED right here on the Pico. That way I don't have to wire up another one. I'll just use the one that's there because uh, it's convenient. So we'll say I'm going to create an object called LED and that'll be from machine.pin, number, pin number 25. And that's the wire connected to it, uh, the LED. And then we're going to set that pin up as an output so that we can control the LED. Next, we're going to import another object or create another object called slide switch. Very creative, right? And that'll be equal to machine.pin. We're creating it up or uh, configuring that as a pin. And uh, GP number 15 is the pin we're using. We've set it up as an input using the IN nomenclature there. And we're going to give it a pull down resistor so that when the switch is off, we're fairly well assured the, the input value will be a zero or an off and not floating high randomly. Uh, I print out a ready, set, go at the start of all my main loops just so I can keep track at the beginning when I see printing happening down here in the shell. Then we jump into our main loop. These are the typical main loops that you'd find in almost all microcontroller programs. This is the, the line of code that's going to do the real work for us. We're going to say if the slide switch dot value is equal to true, meaning it's on, and that would be uh, input GP15 is high, then we're going to turn the LED value to on, which turns the LED on. Then we'll print on and that'll show up in the shell. And then if I also wanted to do something or have an action based on the switch being in the off position, I would have LF slide, sw uh, slide switch dot value is equal to false, meaning off, that would also mean GP15 is low. We would print the word off and then turn the LED off. Now let's see how that looks when we run the actual program. So we'll click start. We'll see it running down here as off. I'll slide the switch on. We see the LED come on and we see the words on printed on the screen. Switch it off and it turns off. Working with a slide switch is truly that simple. You're only checking for its current state and you're not monitoring the transition from off to on and on to off, which adds a whole lot more complexity to its usage. So slide switches are very handy and you may have uses for them in your projects. That should pretty well wrap up our discussion using slide switches on the Raspberry Pi Pico using MicroPython. As with most of the videos in this series, 
we have files that you can download, which would include uh, the fit Fritzing diagram and source code, uh, perhaps some other information uh, as needed. You can download that from our companion website, makingstuffwithchrisdayhut.com. Links are provided in the description below. I'd also like to mention that there's probably about 50 or 60 total videos planned for this series on the Raspberry Pi Pico and interfacing it using it uh, with a variety of devices. You can find more information about the full series on our companion website with links to each of the videos and a, a complete description. I'd like to express my thanks. I really do appreciate you spending time watching the video with me today. Uh, hopefully you found it informative or entertaining. Um, if so, I would hope that you'll subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It costs you nothing, so it's uh, certainly very good value. Uh, if you like the video, please click the like button. And uh, there's this notification bell somewhere in that same area that allows you to be notified whenever I publish a new video. So that can be kind of handy if you're following along, especially with this video series on the Raspberry Pi Pico. With that, I hope to see you in the next video.